This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Ferndale Community Church. Welcome to any visitors or guests today. We're glad to have you. We've got a wonderful service this morning. And uh, we've got uh, George Patmore, if you know George, going to lead us in music, our music worship. And we've got Hector Caban, who's going to give the message today. And uh, Bob, the other elder, is going to lead us with the... Uh, for the communion this morning comes from Romans 5, 1 through 11, which is a wonderful passage and it's appropriate for today's, for communion today. And I'm reading from the New International Bible. And the, the heading they put in here is peace and joy. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through whom, through whom our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, Though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. That's wonderful. We are reconciled to God the Father through the blood of the Son, through Jesus. So, love that passage. Brings and it talks about the hope which we need even in suffering. There's hopes. Uh, now is the time for the prayer time. Uh, I have to say I talked to uh, Glenda's and Jerry's son Jeff yesterday, and uh, he said that Jerry is getting better slowly. Jeff said he's, he's recovering slowly, appreciated our prayers, but uh, it's a slow process and uh, he is getting better. And I guess uh, I talked to Judy and, uh, where's Judy? Oh, Judy's back there, okay. And Marie is still about the same. Okay, we will remember Marie. Uh, she's getting close to going home to the Lord, I guess, and it's, it's touch and go now, but uh, she hasn't changed. We have to remember to pray for Marie. Uh, any other names that we should be praying for? You know, I need a piece of paper to write these names down or I won't remember them. Uh, there's a little tiny piece of paper here. What? <laughs> I'm going to... Oh, yeah. I think I can... You want a piece of paper? Yeah, if you got a half a sheet of there or something, because I forgot that? to bring a piece of paper oh, up here. It's your outline. We'll oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, it'll give me something to, to write on here. My memory is not as good as it used to be. Uh, Shirley. Uh, I talked to Susan, our lady's daughter, yesterday. And of course, you know, she's at home. She's not getting up right now. Uh, Susan said she moved her bed to the back of the house where she could look out on the garden. And uh, doing the best she can. Okay. So, you know, Arlene Smith, her daughter, uh, Susan, is taking care of her, and as Shirley said, she's not getting out of bed, but she had broken, man, broke her leg, wasn't it? I can remember pretty badly, and she is, how old is she now, 93? No, I don't think she's that old. Is she 90, 92, or she's, I think she's in her 90s. Yeah. So, Elaine? Shelly's got 40 people back to work. Oh. Yeah, and next week, hopefully, another 20. So that will be 60 people back. Little by little by little, just creeping up. So your daughter Shelly has a taxi business in Vegas. And it was an interesting show on Sunday morning about the taxi business in New York and medallions and all that stuff and how it's yeah. really, they're really hurting. Uh, but the right limousine business, you know, uh, they're, they're getting evicted off their property and a, a taxi cab company that Ray helped start it had to declare bankruptcy. It's not going good, so any... any, any, any anything, any, any improvements. Any positive thing. 
anything positive of improvement. So, okay. Uh, and Jen, yeah. Um, we need to pray for Ellie. Ellie Green, she had her surgery on the 30th. But I can't remember if it was for her knee or for her hip. It was yeah. for her hip. Yeah. Hip replacement. But her, her, her son was going to pick her up when she got through with uh, rehab and take care of her. So. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, good. It's for her. Yeah. Okay, any other prayer requests over here? We got. And okay, Kim in the back, and then we'll. Um, let's pray for Janet and Robert on the trip. Yeah. Janet and Robert Fisk yeah. are traveling. Yeah. Travel mercies for them. And uh, Petey? Um, for my granddaughter, Brittany. She's in the hospital. She's in the hospital? Okay. Congested heart failure. Uh, Bob praying me this morning, so we will pray for her too. Uh, Elena and Petey's uh, back at Papa Joe's. She still <laughs> makes the greatest hamburger known to man. Great. And she made a chicken parmesan thing the other day. Oh my gosh, it was to die for. <laughs> <laughs> She's still a super chef. I bet they missed you when you were gone. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Harry. Mm -hmm. My girlfriend asked me to pray for her mother. She's her mother's 93, and I'm not very. Uh, I don't remember these things very well. So I said, okay. Well, we so I thought I'd bring it to church. <laughs> we will pray for her because God knows what the issue is, what is going on, and and, uh, and He will certainly answer, listen to our prayers, and I believe He answers all of our prayers. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in our time that we want them, but He does eventually. Mm -hmm. So. All right, would you please pray with me now? Oh, Father God, Heavenly Father, Almighty God, you are almighty. You, the creator of the universe, the creator of everything that we see and know and hear. And you watch over us, each and every one of us as individuals. You send us your Holy Spirit, Lord, to be with us, to care for us, to give us direction and guidance. <clears throat> While you are outside overlooking everything, you also look at each one of us individually, each and every one of us, Lord. And so often we forget to bring our prayers to you, and for often we forget to bring our needs to you, our, our confession to you, Lord, and, and we confess that now. Too many times we try to do it ourselves, and then we realize as we pick ourselves up from a heap that uh, you, we need you, Lord. We need you in our life to take care of us, to do the things that we know we can't do, but sometimes we get off on our own, Lord. We confess we don't do the things we should do sometimes, and very often those things that we know we're not supposed to do, but we do continue to do them. Father, we thank you for everything you've given us, and you give us all we have. Our life, our sustenance, uh, uh, everything that we have in this world comes from you, and we know that, Lord, and we're so grateful for that. We're grateful for answered prayers. We have some prayers here today that we want to pray for uh, Shirley, uh, brought up Susan, uh, Arlene Smith's daughter. She talked to her and she said, Arlene is pretty much staying in bed now, but she's moved her bed to the back of the house where she can look out over the garden. So I just pray for recovery, first of all, for healing for Arlene. Lord, you are the great healer. You are the great physician. And I just pray that you would touch her body, heal her body, and uh, lift her spirits at the same time. And please give uh, Susan peace about what's happening and what you're doing. Thank you for the report from Elaine about Shelley, that uh, 40 people are working now back at the business in Vegas, and, and uh, even more are starting to come back, Lord, and we thank you for that. We pray that you would protect these people that are working, protect the drivers, and uh, protect the, the customers that are with them, Lord. We pray for Ellie, who had uh, uh, surgery, hip surgery. Pray that you would heal her body, Father. She was in great pain before, and, 
We just pray that the surgery will be successful and she will no longer have that pain. And we hope that her, pray that her recovery will be complete and uh, quick, Lord. Pray for Janet and Robert who are traveling. Please grant them travel mercies. Pray that your angels will watch over them, protect them and guide them and keep them from any, any troubles. And especially we want to pray for Petey and Robert's, uh, I mean David, Petey and David's granddaughter, uh, Brittany, who's in the hospital with congestive heart failure. Lord, we don't know why these things happen. And uh, it's a puzzle to us, but we do know that you are with her right now. We pray that you would heal her body, whatever that heart failure is, whatever's going on there, Lord. We pray that you would shock the doctors, that they would be surprised at the miracle you're going to perform for Brittany, Father. We pray that your will will be done, but we also want to pray for healing. Uh, we're uh, pray for Harry's girlfriend's mother, who's 93 years old, whatever her issue is, Lord, uh, you know what it is. You're with her all the time, and we just pray that you would take care of that and give peace and comfort to Harry's girlfriend, knowing that you are with her mother and watching over her. And we're grateful that Petey's back at Papa Joe's, Father, doing the cooking that she always did, the, the wonderful cooking that we love, and we're grateful for that. We just pray you would be with her and protect her there while she's doing that. And Lord, most of all, we, we're grateful and thankful for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross. As the scripture says, even when we were, were his enemies, he died for us. And we're just so grateful for that, that we can come before you today because of that and uh, talk to you directly through our prayers. Grateful. And we pray it in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. George, are you ready? I heard an old old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood
song, at least to some of you it's new, when Stephanie and I came and put these in the system the other day, I looked it up on CCLI and it was like their number one song that's being uh, reprinted and, and projected in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the United States, so that's pretty cool. It's, it's, I think you'll find the words uh, very meaningful. It's called, What a Beautiful Name. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. You're hidden glory in creation, now revealing you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is.
everlasting love. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path goes from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. so much 
being here, serving the community. Uh, we did move here to serve Eureka and Humboldt County. It, it was a purpose-driven move. It was not a, a move to for our own well-being. <laughs> you know, we came to serve, and so we're, I've, my kids have grown. They've grown so much just to be, uh, not to be selfish. Does that make sense? You know, it's, it's good to be part of a community that we're, we're here together. Um, but sadly, that's really what my message is, is that uh, we live in a country that's supposed to be united. In fact, we're called the United States of America. And sadly, I'm seeing it divided. You know, I would hate to change the name of divided states of America. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, that's the reality that's, that we're heading towards. To. But I do have hope. I hope that's not going to happen. I hope that we stay united as a state. United States of America. And, um, you know, my topic today is unity. I, I, I believe with everything going on with COVID, with the economy, with, uh, with obviously the racial uh, division, and not just racial division, now we're seeing division between local authorities and the community. Mm -hmm. And so you have all of this coming against, and at the end of the day, it's really causing division. At the end of the day, it's causing the vision. And, you know, um, I'm not a, a, a great hunter, per se, but I love to hunt. I love hunting, right? And, I, and, and I'm still a city boy. I, I'm not, don't call me a country boy, okay? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a country boy. But when I in, got introduced to hunting, I've learned so much about myself. And I've learned so much of, to, uh, to be responsible and to be appreciated with the food that you have in your house. Um, with that said, I have noticed some things of the kingdom of God in the journey of hunting. And one of it is that the enemy will divide us when he wants to attack us. Mm -hmm. So for example, in hunting, when you have two bucks pouring at it, they will go and, and battle around. Sometimes they'll walk their antlers and so forth. But I, what I have seen, it, there's a video out that I saw the other day where you have these two bucks battling, right? They're fighting. And what they don't see is a lion behind them coming at them. And so they're just going at it, going at it, going at it. And all of a sudden, it's too late. The, one of the, the lion grabbed the, uh, the buck and killed one of them. And they were too busy fighting against each other, not realizing where the enemy was coming from. <laughs> And that's what, I believe that's exactly what's happening in not just our local community, um, but I believe that's what's happening in this nation, is that we're fighting one another for sometimes the dumbest things in the world, for the dumbest things in the world. In my own case, we're in transition of moving to, to Texas, right? And I have seen, you know, and, and moving is, by itself is, is hard. We have, everyone agrees, it can be a stressful time, new school, and so forth. But I have noticed that like, my wife wants a certain type of house, I want a certain type of house, or I want this certain type of community, or, and vice versa. And we have our own um, desires, does that make sense? Because we want the best for our kids. But there are sometimes we have a point where we disagree, and all of a sudden, we start fighting. And then our kids start seeing each other, seeing us fight. And that's when we start losing the vision of why we're moving to Georgia, or to Texas, you know. And I had to step back the other day. I was like, wait, 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 wait. I know this is a stressful time for our family, but we've got to stay unified right now. At least me and my wife do. We've got to stay unified for the sake of the kids. We can disagree on certain things, but we've got to make sure there's peace in this house. That's the number one thing. We've, I, I had to say that to myself. And so, you know, I believe now is the time for the church to stop arguing. Now is the time for the church to stop arguing. Yesterday I was with my friends and uh, I noticed, well not just yesterday, but just in, just in the past, recently, I've noticed that even within our own friends, our own community, we have our own opinions. And that's fine, 
But we've got to be careful of when we substitute truth and opinion. You know, because what's happening is everyone is um, we're, we're just trying to stay alive. You know, everyone's on to themselves. And so what we do is, it's human nature for us to find truth, or what we think is truth for ourselves. But the fact is that we've got to be careful that what we think is true is actually a lie. Does that make sense? For example, if I have a headache, right? A headache is a fact. I'm in pain, right? I'm in pain. And so I'm doing something with it. So, all right, I'm just gonna get some medicine. I'm gonna go to Walgreens and go get some medicine, take care of my headache because I'm in pain. And I keep doing that, and all of a sudden, man, this headache won't go away. I'm stating the fact that this headache go away. I am in pain, right? But then I say, well, I've got to do something about it. So I'll go to a doctor, and the doctor says, well, you really don't have a headache. What's happening? You've got a tumor. What happened? I was. What I thought was true was really a, just a fact in my life. The truth was I had, a, a, I had a tumor in my brain. Unless I find the truth, then I won't be able to find how to, how I won't be able to resolve it. Does that make sense? And so what, what I feel is happening is each of us are trying to find what, what's true to us instead of what's the truth. And you can apply that in any parts of our lives, economically, or so, whether it's socialism or anything like that. It, we, we try to find what's true to me, instead of what the truth is. And we were finding, the, like the Bible says, what the truth, when we find true truth, that the actual truth, which is Jesus Christ. When we have Him in our lives, when we have Him in the midst of chaos, then it will set us free. That's actually what I believe will bring unity. What's the road to unity? Is truth. Truth is actually brings us to an agreement, an alignment. See, true unity is the diversity of people going after the same thing. We're not looking for the same people. In fact, if any of us have kids or within family, we know we're all different. Right. All my three girls are different. I don't want them the same. I am not looking to make a robot. I am looking for a unique person in my house. However, we're all going to the same goal, and that's family. Everyone brings something different to the table. We can't confuse that we want, oh, we're all the same. No, we are not the same. We are not the same. We don't want to be the same. But we also, we want to go to the same goal, and that's the gospel. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. In fact, in Genesis, it says, let us, Holy Spirit, Jesus and God, let us make men in our own image. We have three different people acting as one, going after the same goal. We gotta keep reminding ourselves as at the end of the day, we're going back to the garden. We're going, this is a kingdom thing right now. What the enemy is trying to do is to buy the kingdom so he can take hit the, he can take it for his enemy. Look, look what happened. God made God made man, right? He gave man his own image. In the next verse, a little snake comes in and tries to bite man by how? By questioning the truth. If the enemy can question the truth in your life, he will cause division in your house. If you question the truth in your life, he will cause division in your house, just like how he did in Adam and Eve. He said, did God say this? The devil questioned the truth. And what I feel like what we need to start doing as a body is we need to recognize the truth. We need to go back to basics. We need to go back to the basics. We need to go back that Jesus is the truth in life. The, fa the devil is a, is a father. He's the father of lies. Some, some people say, well, you know, this is what I believe. Yeah, you can believe it all you want. 
And you may be that may be true to you. It may be true, but you believe in a lie. Amen. You believe in a lie. If my, if, my, if my daughter goes ever, and listen, we all go through this journey of growth, all of us, when we're adolescents to teenagers, and we all do this. It is, it is somewhat part of life to grow into learning from our mistakes. But as a father, I want them to walk on the road of truth. As a father, it may, it may be a different road that I took when I took as, as when I was younger, and that's okay. You know, generations take different roads and and we build on each other's truth. That's fine, as long as you're walking in truth. Because why would we hate to see any of my kids believe in a lie as they actually grow? So, you know, they say, well, Dad, I don't need a job. I don't need a job. Everyone's going to take care of me. <laughs> Have fun with that. <laughs> Have fun with that. You tell me how that's going to work out for you. You know, I'll let them, at one point, I will let them to believe a lie because they'll find out what truth is real fast. <laughs> real fast. Real fast. You know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, I'm really in praying. I'm interceding, interceding for the church because it's easy for us to criticize each other right now. This is not the time to criticize. This is the time for us to come together as a Amen. church. We have folks, we just prayed four, five, six times today for people who are hurting right now. They can care less about this other stuff. They're hurting. We need to come to them right now. So we can be bickering on each other, but we have folks here in this house that's hurting, and they don't need this argument. They don't need people criticized. They need to come together and help one another right now. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's what we need to start doing as a global church, is that how can we come together, unified in truth, and true, that's a big deal, right? Because remember the Tower of Babel? Right. Unity is a, such a powerful thing because God said, we have got to divide this. They were so unified, they created a tower because they wanted to go to heaven by themselves, called, you know, humanity, since, you know, um, they substituted God for humanity. You can't do that. True biblical truth is when God is in the middle. Amen. And so that's how powerful unity is. And God will cause the vision to make sure he is number one in the world. He will divide. He will divide that. He will divide. But he is asking the body of Christ to come unified for his glory to be manifested in us. Because if we can't stay together as a body, as a family, as a family structure, and how will they know that you love God? How will they know you love God? He paid the ultimate price for His glory to be manifested on earth. And I believe the best way for us is to show that it's not just, it's literally not just uh, to sign the wonder, if, but it's to, be, it's to be unified the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And what you guys have done today by praying one for one another is an example of what true community unity looks like. It really is. It's we make this so complicated and it's not. Right. This is not a complicated kingdom at all. So um, I want to actually declare before I get to it. Um, let me read this. In Psalms, he says, when God will command his blessings when people are unified. Mm -hmm. So I am declaring that over this house. I'm declaring that over everyone here. And in this town, that we come together, not from a left hand, not from a right hand, Lord, but as a body, as one, one body in Christ, Committed in truth, as we walk in truth, that we don't have to change our own identity. We don't have to change um, 
our appearance to make us the same as another person. Mm -hmm. That we stay true the, the way he created us. The way he created us, unique and in truth. And declare that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Stop!